Welcome to Morrowind Monday. I'm Nighty, the Black Panther Kitty, and I'll be your host for this episode. Last time we were traveling all the way from down here, Vivek, up to Cool, along the coastline, over the water, onto this island, because we're headed for the Sanctus Shrine. And since we're not allowed to talk, I'm sorry, we are currently doing so on foot. And there we are, the first attack. Oh, okay, let's use the fireball against this guy. And there we go, take everything. Even I think there was nothing in there. Let us see what awaits us on this very island. But we, before we do so, real quick, I need to change the window that's over here. I need to go into the stream. Twitch stream control page. Okay, there's some kind of cave in here. Directly on the way to the Sanctus Shrine. Hmm. Could be worthy for checking out. This is Sargon. Usually in these caves are bad people. You know what? We're going to do some cave spelunking today. Yes. So this means I am going to drop a quick save and head inside. And let's see what awaits us. Someone who will immediately attack us and does not take any damage from our... Let's try that one. Oh, they are overpowered. Okay, no, we're not going to do cave spelunking. We're going to head on to our quest. That was a quick decision made for us by the game. Uh, is there a way around it? Yes, there's a way around it. It goes south. I think this goes where we were. No, it does not. Okay. And off we go. Very strong enemies. We do need to have stronger, stronger spells, more magicka, and whatnot on the way. But here is someone who we can best. Hello. With a single fire bite, the m mighty mud crab. We slew a mighty mud crab. There is another shrine, but this certainly is not the Sanctus Shrine. But this certainly is a Daedric Shrine, which should appear on our map when we walk past it. I think the trick is to have it fly over and once it does, once it has flown over, we can actually hit it. And we can't rest because there are enemies nearby. Great. I bet it's the Daedric Shrine inhabitants, usually scamps and whatnot. Clan Fears and Daedras, yes, perfect. the stronger variant here and I'm going to die I'm not even trying because that was too fast okay let's load the quick save again and try again this is something that I'm going to try actually because <clears throat> so the reason why the enemies are stronger is because of the level up that we had last time because in this game everything is levels up with you that said, not 100%. Some of the things don't level up straight with you. Like, there will always be mud crabs here, for example. But there are such things as leveled lists. This means there are... These are randomized lists of things where the game selects something based on your player level. Or basically, 
in the randomized list you can specify when the player is level let's say 5 to 10 then this entry is valid if they are below 5 or above 10 this entry is no longer part of the list and then it selects one item from said list so now we know what, what we're dealing with can much easier head around it first of all I'm going to take it okay so he's let's try sneaking Even though that makes us very slow if we succeed we also gain sneaking skill points succeed in this case of course means we succeed sneaking checks so when the game decides that they don't see us anyway, then of course we also don't gain any sneaking skill points. And this is something you should get used to because this is the normal way that I traverse the lands. Music stopped. It was just a scam. This is the way that I normally traverse the land in Oblivion onwards, Oblivion and Skyrim, because this means that we are doing double and triple damage. But sneaking in this game is so super hard, at least for me, this one is also very... And we contracted the disease again. Hopefully there is a shrine at the shrine, so we can do a donation and get healed and the destruction skill increased to 58 and we should rest to heal there we go so as we can see the shrine is just over there so this means we are going to use water walking. And head over here. Get onto the correct island and go on. Drop a little quick save, rest, and then head over to our quest goal. Sanctus Shrine. In the lower left corner, lower right corner, sorry, it already said Sanctus Shrine. We have arrived at our destination. <laughs> It's a very strong one. Let's try the fireball again. That one worked. It's a blighted cliff racer. So it sounds like we should here actually contract a disease because there are so many blighted creatures here. And we should get a Cure Blight disease on ourselves. But do we have something like that? Cure? Cure Common Disease? No. We need to learn Cure Blight disease also. But here it is. The Sanctus Shrine. And of course we're going to collect all the flowers. We'll drop a little quick save. And read the inscription you have made the pilgrimage your vow of silence is lifted let's check out what we have inside the shack oh come on leave me alone she does not seem to like us oh yeah of course because I got a blight disease sorry 
I need to get cured. But, well, this is easy because this can happen in any temple. Since I want to talk to her, I'm going to use the Holy Trin Trinity of Teleportation. Intervention? Oh, I'm CV Intervention. That's the one. And we are back in Aldrun at the temple. Speak your needs. Now we're just going to go here, receive a blessing, cure blight, and we're cured. Recall. We only need to succeed in casting the spell, and now we can talk to her. What brings you here, Nighty? Well, actually, the Sanctus Shrine itself. Yes, this is the Sanctus Shrine. This is the very Sheik Tholorus Serioni lived when he wrote his sermons. I am merely the caretaker. So this is... So this is the table where he sat and ate his ash yams and drank... And this is where he slept. Well, thank you for showing me this. Thank you for taking care of this place then. Okay, let's head back to the temple in Aldrun. And take the Silt Strider back to Vivek. and drink something. Can we hurry this along? I suppose you're looking for a death. <sighs> no, not the Suits Rider, the Mage's Guild to be back. Nope. There was a frame drop here. Because the Suit Strider is further north, outside of a foreign quarter, the Mage's Guild is inside the foreign quarter. What can I do for you, friend? This was Frulian. Hajira! I just passed by on my way over to Vivek because I wanted to see you. You're looking gorgeous as ever. But I need to head on. Oh, you know what? Let's, for all time's sake, Let's do, do some alchemy together, shouldn't shall we? Get out the alchemy stuff. And let's see. I'm going to go by magic effects. Fortify magicka on only one ingredient. Restore magicka on only one ingredient. Restore health on only one ingredient. What is this? Well, restore fatigue, at least. No potion done. Burden would skill through the effects. This is easier than going through, uh, going it in a different way. No potion created. One, yes. So I'm just training my alchemy this way, just by creating a potion. Ooh, drain fatigue is a good one. And our alchemy skill increased. This makes our potions stronger. We can't apply poisons to our weapons in this game. So we actually need to just sell them. Because for some reason our character does not know how to apply poisons to weapons, but it seems that other people can because they, they gladly buy potions. I did some levitation potions, 
those come in handy if you don't have a levitation spell, which we do have. Yeah, this is a little. Well, I would these we already did. This is a little bit of work, but now we can sell. Oh yeah, this was the silver longsword was for go slaying ghosts. So this is very weak, fortify magicka, five points. And also this only changes the maximum magicka, so we still need to get the magicka itself into our bar, basically. Mm, cure poison, drain fatigue, these of course do, do not help us at all. Restore health sounds good. Fortify personality. This sounds very good because personality also affects speechcraft. But the levitation potions, um, no. Well, cure plight disease. We actually can cure. Could have cured ourselves. That's good. Good to know. I'm going to keep only one of them. We can cure poison on our own. Restore endurance. Mm, yeah, we only want to restore fatigue. Even more restore fatigue, restore health, even more restore health. And now, Ajira, this is what you've been waiting for, the ingredients that we found. Always need to check that you actually have enough gold, right? You don't want to put you into debt. Okay, there we go. And... There you go, Ajira. Now we're going to head off to Vivek. Oh no, wait, you know what? I'm going to sleep in the bed. All right, I'm intrigued. Heal up. Go ahead. And then go to travel Vivek. Well met. What is it? And there. Water. And towards the south we go. Do the kitty cat thing. I know. We broke nearly all of our bones again. But we're going to heal up. Because we need to be heading south. And again, this is... Uh, yeah, I know, this is abusing a game mechanic. Training by falling down. It's not the best way to train something. could also do this. This would also train the exact same thing and way more effective. And we're heading back to the temple and telling that we did our duties. This looks like a sign for the arena, doesn't it? This looks like a guy with a sword and a shield. So is this the arena district then? Well, no, the same symbol is over there. So I'm, I'm unable to read these signs, honestly, these symbols here. But it doesn't matter much because we're nearing our destination of the temple. By the three, I need to go to the High Fane to report back that I completed my duties. I completed the pilgrimage. 
I think this is the wrong side of the hyphen, isn't it? Yes, it is. Sir, I completed my pilgrimage to the Sanctus Shrine. You made the pilgrimage to the Sanctus Shrine and you have proven your piety. I celebrate your devo devotion. Perhaps you would enjoy these books. Books, you say? And all, uh, one book is Silence, The 36 Lessons of Vivek, Sermon 9, The Four Suitors of Benita, and The 36 Lessons of Vivek, Sermon 27. So what do you think I should do? It's 10-ish minutes left in this episode. So I'd say we sit down here and enjoy a little reading session. That was our inventory. So let's see. The scripture of the word. First, all language is based on meat. Do not let the sophists fool you. Second, the third walking path explores hysteria without fear. The efforts of madmen are a society of itself, but only if they are written. The wise may substitute one law for another, even into incoherence, and still say he is working within a method. This is true of speech and extends to all scripture. Third, do not go to the realm of apology for absolution. Beyond articulation, there is no fault. The adjacent place where the grabbers live is the illusion of the vocal, or the middle realms of the thought, by which I mean the constructed. This is how I stole the certainty of the Chancellor of Exactitude, perfect to look upon from every angle. When you come out of the vocal, you can never be certain. Fourth, the truest body of work is made up of silence as in the silence that results from no reference. By the word, I mean the dead. Fifth, the first meaning is always hidden. Sixth, the realm of apology is perfection and impossible to attack, thus the wise avoid it. Trinity in unity is the world and word of action, the third walking path. Seventh, the sage who suppresses his best aphorism cut off his hands, for he is a thief. Eighth, the clothes of the broken map are worn only by fools and heretics. The map is an exit for laziness. It is the dusty tongue, which is to say the given chart that most take as a story that is complete. No word is true until it is eaten. The ending of the words is Alm CV. Honestly? I do not get a single thing. And I think the next one is equally obscure, but I'm going to read it anyway. The 36 Lessons of Vivek, Sermon 9. Then came the war with the northern man. Oh, this sounds like it makes sense. Where Vivek did guide the Hortator into swift and tricky union with the Dwemer. The greatest demon chieftains of the frigid west were those listed below. Five in un unholy number. Hoaga, the mouth of mud, who appeared as a great bearded king, had the powers of marshalling and breathing the earth. On the battlefields, this demon would often be seen on the sidelines, eating the soil voraciously. When his men fell, Hoaga would fill their bodies back with it, whereupon they would rise again and fight, albeit slower. He had a secret name, Fenya and destroyed 17 Chimeri villages and two Dwemeri strongholds before being turned away. Chemua, the running hunger, who appeared as a mounted soldier with full helm, had the powers of heart roaring and of sky sickening. He ate the Chimeri hero dress Kisumet A, sending the spirit back to the Hortator as an assassin. Sometimes, sometimes called First Blighter, Chimua would give clouds stomach aches and turn the rain of Valoth into bile. He destroyed six Chimeri villages before he was slain by Vivek and the Hortator. Bak, the two-tongued, who appeared as a great bearded king, had the powers of surety and form change. His raiders were small in number, but ran amok in the west hinter hinterlands. Hinter hinterland, that's a German word. Hinterlands, killing many Velothi trappers and scouts. 
He fell in a great debate with Vivek, for the warrior poet alone could understand the northern man's two-layered speech, though LMCV had to remain invisible during the argument, I'm sorry. Barfok, made of planes, who appeared as a winged human with lick-encrusted spear, had the powers of event denouement. If someone knows what this means, please write it in the comments below. I've never heard that word before. What could he do with events? This make them not have happened? Battles fought against her would always end in victory for Barfok, because she could, could shape... Ah, there it's explained. Let me start this one again. Battles fought against her would always end in victory for Barfok, because she could shape outcomes by singing. Four Chimari villages and two more Dwemeri strongholds were destroyed by her decision enforcement. Vivek had to stuff her mouth with his milk finger to keep her from singing well off into ruin. Okay, milk finger. <laughs> I think it is meant as lewd as it sounds. Interesting euphemism though. Izmir, the dragon of the north, who always appears as a great bearded king, had powers innumerable and echoing. He was grim and dark and the most silent of the invading chieftains, though when he spoke, villages were... Yeah, come on. Next. Uplifted and thrown into the sea. The Hortator fought him unarmed, grabbing the dragon's roars by hand until Izmir's power throat bled. These roars were given to Vivek to bind into an ebony listening frame, which the warrior poet placed on Izmir's face and ears to drive him mad and drive him away. The coming forth and the driving away brings all things around. What I shall say next is unpleasant to read, so I'm not going to read it. Uh, the ending of the words is Alm Sivi. This actually, the last thing actually sounds like the dragon shouts, I mean, the dragon of the north, and it sounds like the dragon shouts from Skyrim. So that's interesting. They actually had all this in place already. So the big lore of all, it's something that I really love about, about, about the games. Um, this big lore stuff is actually very big is how do you say it it's they created a whole world of stories around this well this this universe or this this at least this world and all the games that are set place in there always they heed the same set of lore the same set of stories which is something that I really, really love, and it's so complex and so deep. Me meaning with deep, I mean there is so much to it that you never see in the in, in in the games. I mean, you know about the shouts, but then you're it's it's the first time you, you're confronted with it because who reads those books? And I really love that. I really love that. If you read the books, you will actually be able to. Um, yeah, but basically you know the world, and then you you could, if you remembered, see Skyrim. You could have remembered and saw Skyrim, seen Skyrim, and said, "Yeah, that's that's I've read about this. This this is not a new thing. This is not a new idea that they came up with. Dragons that have powers by speaking words. This is in this book they already had this idea, which is pretty neat. And the reason I'm not opening the last book called Silence." is very simple because this is the end of this episode so next episode we will start out with a little story time and i will tell you the story of or i will read you the book of silence which might be empty but it's very valuable bye bye